All right, so we've talked about how inefficient or efficient algorithms can be, but now I want to give you a few examples of efficient algorithms just to get the flavor of it. So we're going to start out with a very simple problem, which is sorting lists of numbers. So the idea here is the input is some list of numbers, which we're going to denote x1, x2, xn. And the output is the same list, but sorted uh, in, let's say, uh, increasing order. And if some of the xi's are the same, that doesn't matter. They should appear next to each other in the list. So it's technically non-decreasing order, but um, that's not really going to affect anything we're talking about. So just as an example, an input might be something like 1, 7, 3, 21, 5. And then the output should just be 1, 3, 5, 7, 21. Okay, so this is the problem, and we would like to come up with efficient algorithms to solve this. Um, the most naive algorithm, which is perhaps too naive, like no one would actually do this, is just try all possible orderings, and for each one, check, did I actually put them in order? So this is, let's call this super naive. Um, so the amount of time that the super naive algorithm takes is the number of possible orderings times the time it takes to check if a list is sorted. So um, let's just see what these are. The time to check if a list is sorted is you see, is the first number less than or equal to the second number? Is the second number less than or equal to the third number? And so on. So if your list is length n, the time to check here is essentially n. Now, there might be some constant multiplicative factor here because actually checking if one number is less than a num another number um, may not take a single step. It might take a few steps, but um, it's still going to be some small constant multiple of the length of the list. And the number of possible orderings, this is a classic combinatorial fact, this is n factorial. So the total time for the super naive algorithm is n factorial times n, and as we saw, n factorial is a really bad growth rate. So let's do something a little less naive, and this is called bubble sort. And the idea here is, I'm not going to try all possible orderings, instead I'm going to look at my list, and I'm going to start looking at pairs of numbers. And if I find any pair that's out of order, I'm going to swap them. So in this list, I would say I see 1 and 7. Those are in order, so I'm going to move on. I see 7 and 3. Those are out of order, so I'm going to swap them. And after I swap them, I now have 1, 3, 7, 21, 5. Okay. And now I keep going. Um, I see 7 is less than or equal to 21, so that's good. I don't swap them. 21 is uh, bigger than 5, so I'm going to swap them. So then I end up with 1, 3, 7, 5, 21. Okay, but I'm not done, right? Because the issue is I went through the list once, and I found sort of all of the adjacent pairs that were out of order, but now there are still some that are out of order, namely 7 is still bigger than 5. So I have to keep going through the list, a number of times until I'm sure I've gotten all of the things that are out of order. So I would go through this list one more time. I would see 1 is less than 3, 3 is less than 7, 7 is not less than 5, so I would swap those. 7 is less than 21. And then, because you don't actually know, uh, you have to go through the list one more time and you'll check and you'll see that it's sorted. And it'll be done. So um, how long does bubble sort take? Well, each time you go through the list, let's call that a sweep. So you sweep across the list and anytime you find an adjacent pair that's out of order, you swap them. So each sweep is again roughly n steps. Right? There are technically only n minus 1 pairs to check, but that minus 1 isn't going to affect this kind of asymptotic analysis. Okay, so each sweep is n steps, and the question is, how many sweeps do we need to do to be sure that we've gotten uh, everything in order. Um, and the answer there, number of sweeps needed, is in the worst case, you will actually need essentially 
n sweeps. And you can see this uh, by looking at the example of a list that's perfectly reversed. So the total time for bubble sort, so bubble sort, is going to be order n squared. OK, so n squared, as we saw, is a lot better than n factorial. Um, but even n squared is not good enough for some applications. You can imagine if you're sorting a list of a million numbers, which is really not so unreasonable in today's data sets. I mean, I'm sure that large companies sort lists that are regularly billions or trillions of numbers. Um, a million squared is a trillion, which starts to take you know, serious time on your computer. OK, so can we do better? And the answer, of course, is yes. Um, although that's not always the case, but I'm showing you this partly because the answer is yes. And there are many algorithms that do better. The one I want to show you is called merge sort. And merge sort is an example of an algorithmic paradigm called divide and conquer. And what I mean by algorithmic paradigm is it's sort of a philosophy where if you have a problem and you realize that you can apply this, you can often get a good algorithm by doing it. And the basic philosophy is just, can you split your input up in some way where you can then solve the smaller problems on the split input and then combine them back to a solution of the original problem? OK, so merge sort is going to do exactly that for sorting. And the idea is you take your list, you split it roughly in half. OK, this is an odd sized list, so you can't do it exactly in half, but when it's even, you can. And then you now recursively call merge sort on these smaller lists, okay, which is then going to split those in half and so on. Um, but let's just assume for the moment that merge sort actually sorts lists. So you're going to use merge sort on this to sort it. Turns out this in this example, this is already sorted. You're going to use merge sort here to sort this. This is already sorted. And so that was the divide step, right? I cut my input roughly in half. Dividing doesn't always have to be in half, but in this case, it's useful. Um, I solve the smaller problems. And now the question is, how do I combine those back to a solution of the bigger problem? And this is what's called a merge operation. And the idea is, if I have two lists that are sorted, each on their own, right? just concatenating them together gives me back my original list, which isn't sorted. So instead, the idea is I want to interleave the elements of these lists so that when I put them back together, the result is actually sorted. And the reason I can do this faster than just sorting the original list is because I know that these two sublists are already sorted. So the basic idea here is you're going to maintain a pointer in each one of these two lists. And it starts out at the beginning because you know that the first element in each list is the smallest in that list. And you say, which of these two is smaller? Well, in this case, one is smaller. So when I merge, I'm going to start with a one. And when I put the one here, I then advance this counter, this pointer, here. Okay. And I advance this pointer, and I keep adding numbers from this list to my merged list until this number becomes bigger than this number. So that's already happened. Five is now bigger than three. So now instead of taking numbers from this list into the merge list, I'm now going to start taking numbers from this list into the merge list. Um, so yeah, five is bigger than three, so I'm now over here. So I now put three in this list. I advance the pointer here. And this, what this is pointing at is now bigger than this one. So I go back to this list. Uh, so now I take the five. I put the five here. I advance this pointer. I see, is seven less than 21? Yes, it is. So I put the seven here. And when you've reached the end of a list, you also go to the other list if there's anything left. So I've reached the end of this list. So uh, I now go back over here. I put in 21. And that's my merge. Okay. So now the question is, why was this actually better? And again, the analysis is fairly simple. The question is, um, how many times do we divide, which is the same as how many times we're going to merge? And how much does it cost me to do the merge? Right? So the analysis here is going to be essentially number of merges times cost to merge. Okay. Now, the cost to merge, let's just look at this example. Again, I'm just walking through these lists, these sublists right, that I split my original list into. 
And I'm going to hit each element at most once or maybe twice if I had to sort of compare it and then come back to it. But basically, I'm just walking along and hitting each element once or twice. So it's essentially, let's say, at most twice the length of the list. So the cost to merge is at most 2n. And how many merges did I have to do? Well, it's the same as we said of how many splits do I have to do. When you split a list in half, right, even if it's roughly in half, um, the length of the longest sublist is at most half the length of the list rounded up. But again, for asymptotic analysis, we can kind of ignore this rounding up because that's at most sort of a plus one. Um, and when I split it again, it's now going to be a quarter the length of the original list, then an eighth, then a sixteenth. Uh, so the base case here is when my list is length one or two, right? Then I don't have to bother splitting. If there's only one thing, it's already sorted. If there are two, I just see are they in order. If not, I swap them. Um, so the question is, how many times do you have to divide n by 2 in order to get down to essentially length 1? And the answer is log base 2 of n. And again, you're going to have to round up because if this is not an integer, obviously the number of merges you do is an integer, but that rounding isn't going to affect the asymptotic analysis. Um, so the total cost here ends up being order n log n. And this we like. This is much closer to linear than n squared, right? So on a list of length a million, log base 2 of a million is roughly 20. So uh, n log n is roughly 20 million in this case, whereas for an n squared algorithm, it was a billion. So here we see, uh, by using this algorithmic paradigm of divide and conquer, we actually get a much better algorithm. Um, you can also actually prove that n log n up to some constant multiple is optimal. There is no algorithm for sorting in general as long as all it's doing is comparing and swapping uh, that beats n log n. Interestingly, if you know that what you're sorting is integers, which is not always, right? It could be strings and you want to put them in alphabetical order or some more complex uh, mathematical or combinatorial object where you have some notion of order and you're sorting them. But if you know it's integers, and you're allowed to do more than just compare and swap and move things around, but actually look at like the bit representations of these integers, you actually can beat n log n. Right? You can get down to things like n log log n, which is even better. But the really big jump here was from n squared to n log n. So this is our first example of an efficient and essentially optimal algorithm.